there is a famous saying necessity is the mother of all inventions but some discoveries and inventions occur completely by accident one such story is the discovery of the miracle drug penicillin by alexander fleming in 1928 as we all know researchers should be careful in their research as the process is very expensive but in fleming's case a bit of carelessness led to the discovery of the wonder drug and the world's first antibiotic penicillin let us know how it happened Alexander Fleming was a Scottish physician and microbiologist in St Mary's Hospital London. Fleming served throughout World War 1 in the Royal Army Medical Corps. During this time, he witnessed the death of many soldiers from sepsis resulting from infected wounds. In those days, antiseptics were used to treat infected wounds. However, he observed that rather than curing these antiseptics often worsen the injuries killing more soldiers than the infection itself this is because antiseptics were able to remove surface bacteria but failed to reach anaerobic bacteria in the deep wounds in 1922 fleming discovered lysozyme an enzyme with weak antibacterial properties however the enzyme was effective only against a small number of non harmful bacteria in september 1928 Fleming was investigating the properties of staphylococci, bacteria that cause boils, sore throats and abscesses. He inoculated petri dishes with staphylococcal culture and went on a vacation. Accidentally, an uncovered petri dish sitting next to an open window became contaminated with mold spores. When Fleming came back from the vacation, he observed that the zone around the mold was completely clear as if the mold had secreted something that inhibited bacterial growth. Generally in research this is considered as contamination and the contaminated plates will be discarded as they are of no use Here instead of discarding the plate Fleming started thinking about the reason for bacterial death It was an awesome observation that led to the initiation of antibiotic era Fleming identified the mold as penicillium Later he discovered that it was not the mold itself instead some juice produced by the mold that killed the bacteria he named the mold juice as penicillin it was effective against all gram positive pathogens which are responsible for diseases such as scarlet fever pneumonia gonorrhea meningitis and diphtheria initially the scientific community greeted his work with little enthusiasm in addition the mold juice was unstable and difficult to isolate in large quantities so the work was discontinued but fleming saved the mold and distributed that to many experts in the hope of making penicillin drug after a long gap of almost 10 years howard florey ernst chain and norman heatley from oxford university made a great contribution to turn penicillin from a laboratory curiosity into a life saving drug they made all attempts to produce penicillin on a large scale Just to carry out a program of animal experiments and clinical trials, the team needed to process up to 500 liters of mold filtrate and about 2000 liters of mold filtrate to treat a human. To achieve this, Heatley cultured the mold in a variety of vessels with large surface area, including biscuit tins, bottles, milk churns, petrol cans, and even bed pans. Eventually, a customized fermentation vessel was designed to hold the liquid. A team of penicillin girls was employed to inoculate and look after the fermentation process. With enough crude penicillin powder in 1940, Florey carried out animal experiments. He injected 8 mice with a virulent strain of streptococcus and then injected 4 of them with penicillin. All untreated mice died whereas the penicillin treated mice were healthy and alive. showing that penicillin could protect mice against infection from deadly streptococci later in 1941 a 43 year old policeman albert alexander became the first recipient of the oxford penicillin he had a cut on his face and had developed a life threatening infection with huge abscesses affecting his eyes face and lungs he initially showed signs of recovery but the supply of penicillin quickly ran out and albert's infection returned As a result, he died five days later. Now, the team followed an unpleasant method to recover penicillin. 
they found that around 80% of the penicillin injected into the body is excreted in urine. So, they collected patient's urine and attempted to extract and recycle penicillin from that. With their growing success, the team approached pharmaceutical industries in Great Britain for mass production of penicillin. However, they were unable to do so because of World War II commitments. Later, the Oxford team approached the United States to scale up the production. The experts in the United States used defermentation tanks to culture the mold. They also found that the use of corn steep liquor, a waste byproduct of corn starch, produces an excellent environment for mold growth with an increased yield of penicillin. In addition, the laboratory assistant Mary Hunt found a better strain of penicillium from a rotting melon that yielded six times more penicillin than Fleming strain. Later, Flory approached pharmaceutical companies such as Pfizer, Squibb, Abbott, Merck for the mass production of penicillin, especially for war victims. Throughout history, the major killer in wars had been infection rather than the battle injuries. The use of penicillin has reduced the death rate from 18% in World War I to 1% in World War II. Due to their great contribution to mankind, Fleming, Flory and Chain were awarded the Nobel Prize in 1945 in physiology or medicine. Using discovery and production techniques similar to penicillin, researchers discovered many other antibiotics in the 1940s and 1950s such as streptomycin, chloramphenicol, erythromycin, vancomycin and others. Today, if we have health issues, we can easily get medicines from a medical store even without a prescription. We should be thankful to all scientists who have dedicated their whole life towards drug discovery and other inventions. At the same time, it is our duty to be careful while using these drugs, especially antibiotics as misuse of antibiotics can lead to antibiotic resistance. The microorganisms are becoming resistant to all sorts of antibiotics available. As a result, antibiotics are failing to kill resistant pathogens. If we are not careful, soon we may face the pre-antibiotic era where even minor infections may lead to death.